All right. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to another video. This is actually the first video, third video I'm filming today, but the first video that is for everybody to consume. The first two were for my membership, people, you know, being in the space with Kat. Uh, so if you're not a member and you might want to see what those videos are about, consider being a member. Join us, join the family. Support your good sis, bro. Support your good sis. But this is going to be fun because the other two videos were a little bit serious, okay? But this one is going to be fun because I'm going to be answering your questions. And I put up on Instagram last night, if you guys could ask me any questions, it's a great way for me to ease myself back into uh, filming again and doing sit-down videos. And I'm here and I'm going to answer your questions as honestly as rawly, as raw thing, rawly a thing, I don't know, as just most honest as I can be in answering your questions. But before we get started, are you subscribed to the channel? If you're not, please do. I would love to have you here. We would love for you to join. And also consider being a member, okay? Uh, consider being a member. It's not even that expensive. Uh, <laughs> if you can. If you can't, I totally get it. I totally understand. So, welcome to the channel. Welcome back to... A sit down video and a Q&A. So let's do all of this. Let's get into it. Because I'm currently having my first meal of the day and it's one o'clock. And it is a green smoothie with lemon, apple, ginger, and a lot of spinach. So I'm going to be sipping on this as I answer your questions. The first question is a very simple one. How old are you? I'm 34 and I am going to be 35. In a little over a week and I'm really really excited about it because I'm looking forward to this particular birthday oh yeah man, I am I am there's going to be a lot that's gonna happen with this particular birthday but that's gonna be content for the members it be like that sometimes be like that sometimes um, when did your love for books or reading start this is a really great question because I read a lot when I was in school I did um, a lot of reading because of what I studied there was a lot of um, journals and and archive stuff and 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 serious reading that I had to do on politics and international politics international organizations but I also did in English literature at some point in uh, varsity as well and I really enjoyed that because we we're doing a lot of reading of poetry and modern classics and classical books and uh, I read a lot in high school as well. Not as much as my sister. I think my sister read a lot more than I did. But I started my love for reading in high school, progressed with it into varsity, stopped a little bit because once I started doing my postgrad and all of that, I had to focus on just what I was, you know, studying um, and literature in, in relation to what I was studying. But uh, after that, uh, I would like to say I started rereading about three or four years ago and I've just been an, on an upward uh, trajectory since then. So how are you after the break? I hope you're feeling much better and rested. Love you. I do feel better. I do feel better. This is why I'm recording. This is actually a very good day for me because I do feel better. Um, the meds that I am on are making me feel better literally they are rewiring the chemical imbalance that was in my brain so i'm feeling a lot better i'm feeling a lot more energized more inclined to uh, uh record and work and be back in the in the you know swing of things so i am feeling much better love you love you too girl um, how's your relationship going great i think uh we're approaching a year at the end of July will be a year of us being together and it's been nothing but flawless uh, we, we hardly ever fight but when we do it gets a little bit heated because we're very strong personalities I'm a Gemini he's a Scorpio and it's very hard those are 
two people that should never really be in a relationship because it's just wild okay like if 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 you know me personally and you know the kind of interactions i get into with my sister and my father woo um so yeah but nevertheless right now it's going great i was speaking to him just now everything is going splendidly swimmingly swimmingly we just smile and wave boys we smile and wave how did your partner process your time away it, it my partner is the strong one between the two of us um i'm the strong one when it comes to a lot of other things and a lot of the interactions that i have with uh other people that are in my life i try to to be i just un, unwillingly and unknowingly sometimes become the strong one but in my relationship i am weak and i always say to myself super weak but uh, I'm weak. I'm a lot more. I love the fact that I'm in a relationship where I don't have to be strong all the time. He kind of handles all of that for me. And um, him processing the time away was actually quite, he, he approached it quite maturely. I mean, we did speak every day, not as much as we typically do. Uh, I, I would probably speak to him once a day and that would be before I went to bed, especially when I was in the facility, before I went to bed. And it would be a brief conversation because I was high on meds half the time. So he processed it really, really well. He made sure that I am covered if I need a daughter, which I got lucky because there was Wi-Fi there. Um, he got me daughter. He got me uh, clothes before I went there. Like I needed more sweaters and just lounge wear things and we went shopping the day before and he got me all my clothes and he got me cosmetics because he felt like i shouldn't take the cosmetics that i have in the house um because they're slightly more on the expensive end so he bought me cosmetics just to make sure that i'm comfortable and sorted i really didn't need money when i was there um but yeah he's just been great he processed it quite well and he was quite mature about it um, and I think we just became stronger during that time because um, he got exposed to a lot of things that I've been through as a child, as a grown-up, and he's just been rock solid. So, yeah. Um, how are you feeling after the hospitalization? I did it in 2018. The best ever decision for myself. Best ever decision. To be honest, when I came out of that facility... Within two weeks of me being out of that facility, I achieved things that I had, I worked on and achieved and did things that I had been planning to do for months. Uh, I made some really, really difficult decisions, um, but my heart now, yo, nyalala, guys, nyalala, we too. Yo, I sleep soundly at night. I'm, 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 I'm in a good place. Oh man, it's the best decision that I did and I'm only like three weeks out at this point. Um, but yeah, I really, really, really thank myself every day. And I thank my family and my friends and my lover for supporting me in that time. So really best decision, best decision. Okay. Are you subscribed? Please subscribe while, while, while we're here. Let me just take a sip. The neighbor's dog is going crazy. I'm not going to stop recording because of the neighbor's dog, gents. Be, um, uh, otherwise, we're going to be here all day. And I don't want to be here all day. Get Friday. Now I want to start having a drink. Okay. There's another. How old are you? What do you do for a living except YouTube? I'm assuming this is either a new subscriber. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm in project management and I work in the construction industry. That's what I do for a living. I love you so much. I love how down to earth you are and you're not conceited. Thank you so much. May God bless you. May God bless you too, chair. Thank you. What were you doing when you were off social media, if you don't mind me asking? I'm assuming that she hasn't watched the latest video. I did say that I was away and I was working on my mental health and I checked myself into a mental health facility and uh, that's what I was doing, what I was doing while I was away. Tough, tough times. Tough time never lasts. Only tough people last. If you know where that is from, you know, okay? If you know, if you don't know, forget about it. If you don't know it, forget about it. Okay? Um, I'm happy and I'm proud of you. 
emotionally thank you so much emotionally i am taking it day by day uh, some days are hard some days are good like today i woke up feeling good and i said i'm recording and here we are and i feel even better now that i'm recording i missed this man i missed it so emotionally i'm pretty good i'm pretty good so thank you for asking have you ever considered being a life coach your podcast shows that you know a lot i'm actually studying to become a life coach <laughs> how do you keep productive all the time sometimes i don't want to do life let me tell you i haven't been productive for the past three weeks okay well i've been back for almost three weeks but the three weeks before that i was not productive at all and i had to allow myself <clears throat> To just let everything go and to just focus on uh, myself so I don't best know how to answer this because I'm very high functioning I like to be productive all the time and since I have been out of the facility I've been mad productive each and every single day I'm doing this I'm doing this I'm doing the landlord diaries I'm fixing the house I'm doing this I'm baby girl my cars had to go to service I there was just a lot there was just a lot and i was just dealing with life but sometimes um like you say sometimes you just don't want to do life and you should grant yourself the peace to you should grant yourself the peace to understand that that's okay like you we don't have to do life all the time we can take days off um sometimes you just have to sometimes i have to switch off the camera i have to switch off i just have to switch off and i choose to read or i choose to color um that's something that i do now i color now since being out of the facility i color now and i love it i'll show you some of what i've colored in um some vlogs but um you have to take the time out and it's okay it's okay as long as you don't stay where you are because then when you do that then there's something more wrong there's something that's 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 that you might need to attend to mentally but as long as you don't stay there it's okay to take a break and i feel like you need to tell yourself that you know you need to say it to yourself and you need to tell yourself that it's okay to take a break How are you really sis are you recovering you dodged it a bit in your vlog i didn't dodge it a bit this is something that <clears throat> is going to be discussed quite a lot in my membership space um because it's very very okay it's very very personal to me um just to highlight i was diagnosed with clinical depression while i was away so there's a lot that's been going on um i unearthed therapy was really really hard for me because i unearthed things about myself my life my family uh my career how i deal with people and all of that these are things that i'm going to talk about in the membership space um i it unearthed a lot therapy was painful for me and i was in therapy with a psychiatrist and a psychologist every single day so i went to bed very exhausted and often sad and upset and all of that so how am i really now better definitely better the meds that i'm on really really help me kind of just warm up to the world and function each and every single day um and 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 want to be the katleo that i know myself to be you know um so i'm really really i'm i'm getting there i'm i'm i'm, I'm better i'm better i do have days where i've i feel myself wandering towards thoughts that i shouldn't be wandering to but i quickly bring myself back i don't know if it's the meds or if it's me bringing myself back but i'm better i'm better thank you for asking um did you lose or cut off any friends or relatives because of your mental Ill illness people tend to run away um i it's more cut off i didn't necessarily lose anybody i i don't think you know people cut themselves off from me i had to cut myself off of people that i felt like were not bringing me any joy and i had to cut myself off from relationships that just were not serving me anymore um i was tired of being this people pleaser 
that consistently wants to make sure that everything is okay between me and the people that I engage with, but it comes at the expense of my happiness. It comes at the expense, at the cost of my life financially. It comes at, so I had to cut uh, people off and it's been the best decision that I've made for myself. I feel like it's okay. Like the people who want to be in my life are in my life. The people who don't want to be in my life are not in my life. And that's fine. It's okay. It's not a problem. You don't want to talk to me anymore? Okay. Am I sad about it? Sure. But it's okay. It's fine. Um, are you planning on having a child? Yeah. No. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, bro. <laughs> Catch me outside. How about that? All right. Honestly and truthfully, am I planning on having a child? Yes. Because the person I am with wants a child. Uh, we are in the place where we are, he doesn't have a child, I don't have a child, but we're in a place where we're trying to figure out how many we want. I want one, he wants two, and I, I'm just like, I can't have, I am a very, I like to be busy, I like to be what, I like to build myself, I want to be a mogul at some point, and I don't see myself having two, especially at my age right now. So we kind of, but yeah, I'm warming up to the idea of having a kid. I am. I am. Some days I feel like, nah, my life is pretty good. Hey, <laughs> because if I have a kid, I might need to stop buying books at the rate that I'm buying them. Hey, <laughs> so I'm still enjoying my life, but I'm warming myself up to the idea of having a kid. Yes. Would you say you found your purpose? If yes, how did it happen? If no, are you content regardless? I do know that I have found my purpose. And I know that my purpose is to help someone. What I've mentioned this multiple times. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I'm studying to become a life coach. Because I feel like helping one person, whether through my vlogs, mental health videos, Candid with Cats, what, 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 my interactions with others on a daily basis, blah, blah, blah. Helping even one person for me is a win. So I feel like, yes, I've achieved my purpose or I know really, not to say I've achieved it, I feel like I still have a long way to go, but I know what God has put me on the earth to do. And even though a lot of the time when your purpose is to serve and to be there for others and support others, it might not be seen as, you know, it, it might not be the one space in your life where you can make money or where you can, you know, like, like my content is not, the, I say this all the time. It's not the content that a lot of people like to consume. People like to see people being out and about and living their best lives and attending events and making jokes and being funny and doing this. People tend to shy away from videos regarding mental health and they, they shy away from videos that talk about, you know, peace of mind and being intentional about your life and all of that. But for me, that is what gives me my purpose because I know that I get amazing messages, sometimes heartbreaking ones from you guys on my Instagram and all of that. But some of them are amazing. Like your content helps me so much. When are you coming back? What a, what a, what a, and that for me, I can do over and over again. If my purpose is to serve or to teach or to be of assistance to someone. And if God says that is why you are here, then that's exactly why I'm here. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, do you think that being celibate in your 20s is the right thing to do? I think it's a very individual decision to be celibate. Um, if you want to be celibate, it's, there's no right or wrong to this. If you don't want to be celibate, don't be celibate. If you want to be celibate because you're still trying to find yourself and you don't want to connect with somebody physically in that way or intimately in that way physically, I mean, because you can connect with somebody not physically, you know, through sex and all of that. But if you if you're still finding yourself and you're finding your journey and you're walking your journey in life and to you being celibate seems like the right path to follow in that time, then do that. Then do that. It's completely individualistic. Um, if you don't want to be celibate, if you want to run the streets, 
Uh, catch me, catch me outside. Uh, you can do that as well. <laughs> like you can literally do whatever it is that you want to do, and that's fine. Um, how do you find the industry you work in? What are the challenges that you face? The industry I work in was one of the hardest hit during COVID. Uh, we didn't work for a very long time. Uh, and because of that, I had to dip into savings and all of that. Uh, but also, it's a very male-dominated industry. So you kind of have to have a very, very thick, strong backbone when you're going to work in my industry because um, men like to run the show in the industry and if you don't uh, stand up for yourself and if you don't speak up in spaces where you have to speak up like in conferences or in meetings um, if you don't speak up for yourself the industry will swallow you up it really really will um, but I feel like if you if you rise to the occasion and you tell yourself or you know what i'm in this industry because i love it and i'm going to do what i gotta do catch me outside how about that okay um what do you even mean do it shine um one of the other challenges is it's very hard to find work in this industry especially in this time uh post covid so yeah it's hard to find work for companies and it's hard to find work for individuals in this industry. It's a very, very tough time for the construction sector. And whew, don't I know it? Okay. Hey, sis, how do you deal with your mental health when you're at your lowest? I've been struggling. I am at my lowest with my mental health. Um, I just have good days, bad days, and I'm on medication. So it helps me quite a lot. Very strong medication. Um, <clears throat> but when I wasn't, on bad mental health days, I would sleep, I would switch off, I would take digital detoxes, I would uh, speak to my doctor, I would uh, surround myself with people that bring me comfort and bring me a sense of family and, and a sense of home and a sense of love and safety. Um, so I feel like, you know, when you're at your lowest, just be kind to yourself because it is a really tough time that you're in at that point. <clears throat> but try to also surround yourself with people who care about you and people who want the best for you because uh, that'll help. That'll help. Don't be away and alone for far too long. Try to keep engaging with the ones that you care about and the ones that care for you. Okay. Um, where do you buy your plants? Everywhere. Uh, if I see a beautiful plant. Hi, sweetie. Thriving. Um, I buy my plants at pick and pay. I buy my plants. There's a nursery right uh, down the road from where I live that has amazing selection of plants. Um, I buy them everywhere. If I see a really nice plant and I'm just like, mm, I need a plant, I want a plant, I get it. And don't you wish you had a baby i don't wish i had a baby no uh if i do have one great but i don't wish that i had a baby at this point um babies frighten me <laughs> uh when i look at a child i just look at and maybe maybe when i have a child i'll, I'll it'll change uh, but when i look at a child i just look at expenses I look at oh my god <laughs> my life is gonna change <laughs> expenses money um but no, I, I, I love children and I love seeing parents with their children and all of that. And oh, sometimes I get broody here and there, but I don't wish that I had a child at this stage, no. no. Um, can you please reach out to Sistembi from Roslam? This diagnosis is more spiritual than you think. Doll, don't I know it. <laughs> but that's for the membership space. Um, but it's not only that. Also, I must add, it's not only that. I have been going through a lot. I just don't speak about what I go through online. And the spiritual part of me, the spiritual journey, is something that I've never shared online. My family knows about it. Now you guys know about it. And you'll know more detail if you become a member. Would you consider staying with your partner before marriage? But then said vibes. I personally wouldn't mind, but I don't think he would okay with that i think he's more on i'm gonna marry you and then we're gonna stay together he's not uh, i don't think he would he would push those vibes we can fight and set for five days and then split go somewhere catch me outside and then <laughs> come back again for another three days you know that kind of thing but uh no i i don't i wouldn't mind it 
um oof, for me it would even even be better 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 but i don't think he would um no nah, i don't think i'm not crazy about getting married but i'm with somebody who is very insistent on getting married so life you find a dance is your current how's your current relationship is he treating you well very well i feel like i'm in the best space that i've ever been in i don't recall being treated so well in a long time like you know being with somebody who's got uh eq and somebody who treats you well and does nice things for you and yeah 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 it just feels so nice it just feels so nice and uh it's fun man it's fun i, I feel like i, I want to keep him in my pocket and carry him with me everywhere and just be like okay you pay for everything love ya he does that all the time but that's not that's neither here nor there he's treating me very well um i feel safe secure uh my emotions are protected and uh <clears throat> wow i i feel i feel like i'm with somebody who is emotionally available for me excellent how did you find out your last partner was cheating on you Cha. that's a story for another day Cha. I found out a lot of things, very many ways. Way, not something I care to speak about, especially after the question I answered before. Nah, not gonna taint all of that goodness with that. Maybe one day, maybe one day I'll talk about it. Hi, Miss K. How do you channel your mindset to live a healthier lifestyle <clears throat> and avoid the not so healthy stuff? I do eat the not so healthy stuff. I think I said that I've gained weight. I haven't weighed myself in a while. I have piled on, I'm pretty sure, a good five kilograms from my standard weight. Um, and and so it be like that sometimes. My weight, I think, yo-yos quite a bit. Uh, when I have a week where I'm eating super clean, my body agrees with me and I could drop, in a week, I could drop like two kilograms or three kilograms. So... I'm, 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 I'm quite good with where I'm at because I can manage it. Um, but I make it a point to eat healthy during the week. Even though there'll be the odd day where I'll have a burger for lunch because I haven't had the time to come home and uh, have a smoothie, then I'll make sure that that evening I'll have a um, salad. So you kind of have to regulate everything. And for me... I am very, very, very stringent on that. Every single day, I must have something green in my system. Whether it comes in the form of a salad, whether it comes in the form of a poke bowl or a bougie bowl, minus the rice or whatever, I have to have something healthy, vegetables, green in my system every single day, Monday to Friday. Saturday and Sunday, ah, oh man, I play around. I can have a pizza. I can have a burger on Saturday for lunch and have a pizza for dinner. I don't mind. Uh, but during the week, I'm very particular about what I ingest. How does it feel about being an influencer at your age as most of them are younger? Wow, this is an excellent question. And the reason why I say it's an excellent question is because I found myself having these conversations with influencers that are older um, or that are around my age group. For instance, Miss Tato Fox. So... Uh, Mrs. Fox and I found ourselves in, in having these conversations where we talk about, you know, how being older and being an older influencer in this country is something that I hate to say it, but hinders us. I feel like uh, if we were younger um, and maybe, you know, did content that, you know, the younger people do and all of that, maybe we would have a lot more traction or a lot more work coming our way or whatever. Tato and I have spoken about this. She's spoken about it at length in her channel videos. And I've spoken about it at length in my videos as well. And I do believe that it is much harder and it is much harder also considering the type of content that we produce. So it's hard it's hard not to be noticed especially when you put out as much content and um quality content like we do i'm i'm gonna sit here and say it, it's not a lie 
and uh, it's really hard. It's really hard because maybe, you know, maybe the brands and the people just want to go with people who are younger and whatever. And that's fine. Um, I typically wouldn't want to... There's a certain niche of companies that I would love to work with. Um, and 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 it's it's not makeup or clothes or anything like that. It's more home decor or working with you know mental health NGOs or whatever. That's something that would mean something to me. Uh, working with a beauty company, sure. I mean, I wear makeup, yes. Um, but if I were to work with an at home or um, Waylands or what? Oh man! So a lot of the companies that I want to work with I guess it'll be like that sometimes yeah. how do you stay so positive when you put up beautiful content but brands don't acknowledge keep it moving you keep producing content because I'm not producing content for brands to acknowledge them I produce content for you guys I produce content for myself I love to do videos because I want to look back on them one day when I'm in my 50s and I'm sitting with my child and I want my child to watch my videos because there's nothing in my videos that I would hide from my children or my husband or whatever but it would be nice it's like a like a memory box you know YouTube for me serves and works as a memory box Instagram a memory box of you know where I was at some point in my life and all of that so I don't do content to be recognized by brands would I love that yes but is it why I'm doing my content absolutely not I do content so that I can share bits of myself with you guys with the world um, I do content because I love it I love to film I love to talk I love to record it's my thing I love it so I do it anyway so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the Q&A so glad to be back so excited to be back I'm really looking forward to spending some time with you more and more time with you guys um, but yeah until then I'll see you in the next video okay okay Subscribe, join the channel, join the JK fam. We love you guys, K. Love ya, bye.